Um, so what you have generally is the regulations are not peculiar. I mean, transfer pricing is not a peculiar thing for um, Nigeria. Um, so it's something that has that tax authorities globally are interested in and concerned about. Mm. Ultimately, what they are looking to address is to be certain that when these related parties have transactions with one another, they have not manipulated those prices to get a tax advantage. Right. Because the price you set for your transactions will impact how much you recognize as revenues, how much you recognize as expenses, and ultimately your profits. Mm. And corporate tax is based on profits. So that's really the interest, is to be certain that the pricing of those transactions have not had a negative impact on profits and ultimately taxes. Right. So this is likely to give uh, a boost to the um, initiatives of the government to try and increase tax revenues. And that obviously is in the spotlight these days, given the pressure on the government to try and um, uh, close that budget deficit. But d would you say that what they're doing goes too far when you look at the regulations as spelled out? Okay. So, I mean, there, there are three broad themes that um, come out when you look at the regulations. The first, like you said, is there's a push to increase compliance. Yeah. So, for example, they've introduced penalties. Um, and some of those penalties can be relatively material within mm -hmm. the context of the punishments. Right? The other thing that comes out is they're trying to adopt some of the current thinking in the international space around transfer pricing. So sometimes between 2013 and 2015, yeah. there was a project that was driven by the OECD yeah. to evaluate the current international tax principles as well as transfer pricing principles to see if changes needed to be made to bring those you know, principles up to date. Um, there was a report that was issued at the end of that project and we found that the new regulations adopt some of the recommendations from that report. The other thing you'd also find is the regulations try to adopt some of the current Africa-centric thinking around transfer pricing. So subsequent to the OECD project, African tax authorities have been having conversations and there was a consensus that there were African peculiarities that were not addressed by the project. Yeah. So as a result of that, they also suggested changes to transfer pricing rules that African tax authorities could look at. And the new regulations adopt a number of those. So in terms of whether it goes you know, beyond what is expected or not, um, to some extent, it's consistent with you know, what we're seeing all around the globe. However, there are a number of contentious issues. Mm. Um, so the penalties, for example, um, there are questions around whether you know, it's appropriate to introduce those via regulations or whether it should have been you know, through an act of the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. um, and there are also questions around the proportionality. The other interesting bit that sticks out is the valuation of imported products. So if you import products from a related party, the regulation suggests that regardless of the customs valuation, mm -hmm the FIRS is free to work out its own valuation. So basically, you have a situation where two government agencies that would subject you to tax, mm. either directly or indirectly, based on the value of your product. May products. work with different ex prices. Ex exactly. Mm. So that really puts taxpayers in a position where they could be exposed to um, double taxation. Mm. The other bit that is also contentious is if you're you know, making use of intellectual property owned by a related party offshore and you need to pay royalties, the regulations put a cap on what you can pay. So the cap is something about 5% of your earnings before interest, tax, you know, depreciation, amortization, which is not what you'd find you know, in, in the open market, so to say. So when I say open market, what independent in parties, exactly, what independent parties would agree to so, so it's, it's somewhat contrary to the arm's length principle, right. which is really what the regulations as a whole are supposed to try to give effect to. But is it likely that, um, for instance, foreign businesses that are doing businesses with, through Nigerian um, subsidiaries will have a, a 
different experience to what they would have, say, in other African countries or other countries across the world. How significant do you think this will be for a, a multinational that is doing business in Nigeria to adjust to this? Yeah, so I mean, for multinationals that have a business model that involves the licensing of intellectual property, mm. um, this could have a big impact because um, this approach is not the standard globally. So it's one of the things that have been borrowed from the you know, African-centric um, um, proposals that I spoke about. So, so that's basically, basically from the African Tax Administrators Forum um, suggested approach to transfer pricing. So those were some of their recommendations, even though it was an optional recommendation. So what we're saying is Nigeria has adopted that recommendation, which is not in line with what you'd find internationally. Mm. Um, it's possible you could find that in other African countries if they choose to adopt that. But as we speak, I'm not certain there are a lot of African countries that have even you know, adopted that. There's also the question of whether it's appropriate to impose that type of you know, limitation or cap via a regulation. Mm. So, I mean, I see this also as one of the contentious areas um, right. which, which you know, there will be a lot of conversations okay. around if, that. If